How's it going, Jeremiah's? This in front of me is the Korg XE20 Digital Ensemble Piano. And this really is the marriage and the amalgamation of Korg's two best-selling products, the Korg B2 Digital Piano, as well as the Korg EK50 Arranger Keyboard. So literally, you are getting the best of both worlds. So in this video, I will be reviewing everything that you want to know about this keyboard and piano including things like the build quality how does the keys feel like how does the sound sound like what about the user interface and all of this i will be covering in this video If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jeremy C and on my channel, I have made more than 300 videos about arranger keyboards as well as digital pianos. If you enjoy valuable content like this, make sure you subscribe and destroy that notification bell icon. Let's start by having a look at what comes with the piano right out of the box. We have a multilingual user manual, as well as a sustain pedal. You also get your power adapter, a card containing the registration code to download free apps that goes along with your XE20 piano. You also get a massively huge plastic music rest for your books. E20 feels solid, compact, and well-made. While it may not be as compact as Casio's PXS series, it is way slimmer than Yamaha's DGX660. Although almost everything is made from hard plastic, it doesn't look cheap because of the matte and lightly textured finishing. The buttons on the Korg XE20 have a similar layout to those found on the Korg EK50 and i3, but they are significantly smaller and the material used is a little different. The buttons have a bit of wiggle to them and time will tell if the buttons can withstand daily wear and tear. The speakers on the Korg XE20 absolutely blew me away the first time I turned it on and played on it. I'm not sure what secret sauce Korg used, but the sounds from the speakers are full bodied, loud, clear, and distortion free. The Korg XE20 sounds way better than Arranger pianos from competing brands, mostly due to the 18 watts amplifier and the speakers that faces directly to the player, unlike the speakers from Casio, which faces away from the player. Normally, I would use headphones when I play on my keyboards and digital pianos because the sound from the headphones are much better than those from the built-in speakers. 
However, in the case of the XE20, these speakers sound better than the sound from the headphones. One gripe I have about these speakers though are the fabric covers. They attract dust, pad fur, and I have to use a lint roller to remove the dust on the covers regularly. Do you like fabric speaker covers? Let me know in the comments below. want to learn to play the keyboard with chords like this. I have a proven step-by-step -step chords designed for Yamaha, Casio and Cork keyboards that will help you to do that. At the end of this course, I will teach you everything you need to know to just open up a music book and start playing your favorite tunes with lush accompaniment rhythms with minimal effort. I will teach you to read music, play chords and use the different sounds and rhythms on your keyboard. Check out the links in the description below for more information. Cork includes a damper pedal with the XE20. The damper pedal is the same as the one that comes with the Korg B2 and is small and lightweight. Unfortunately, the included pedal does not support the half pedal feature. You have to purchase an optional pedal or the triple pedal unit if you want the half pedal feature. What I really dislike about the pedal is that it uses the exact same proprietary connector as the Korg B2. This means that you cannot use third-party pedals with this connector. But there is a workaround which I will talk about later. For more detailed information about the Korg XE20 Digital Ensemble Piano as well as the latest price, do check out the links in my description. I was hoping that Korg wouldn't keep the 88 shiny glossy fingerprint magnet plastic keys from the B2 piano. I didn't like those. Unfortunately, my wish didn't come true. I much prefer the matte textured key tops from Casio. But the keybed and action of the XE20 is better than competing brands. The graded hammer action keys are quiet, smooth and have a nice graduation from heavy to light. The LCD screen is big and bright, but this is let down by the low resolution and dated orange backlit color. While the screen conveys most of the essential information we need, the low resolution means that Korg cannot put more information on the screen and fully utilize the entire screen real estate. I would love to see what are the four voices in the layers at a glance but this information isn't readily available. What do you think about the orange LCD screen of the Korg XE20? Personally, I prefer a white backlit screen The 
Rx E20 does not come with a pitch bend or a modulation wheel, neither does it come with a joystick. This is quite a shame as many of the built-in voices would have shined much brighter with a modulation and pitch bend. I had secretly hoped that these features can be assigned to the third-party external pedal. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Smash that like button to let Cork know that they should have added a pitch bend and modulation wheel with the XE20 piano. I absolutely love the dual sound engine on the XE20. From the 120 note polyphony piano sound engine, you get two of the best piano samples from Korg, the German and Italian pianos. These are rich, detailed and resonant. And from the other sound engine derived from Korg's EK50, you get more than 700 voices. It is a pity this sound engine only supports 64 notes of polyphony. For a more detailed listing of all the sounds and styles of the Korg XE20, do check out the video description where I will leave a link to a document listing all the sounds and styles you can find on the Korg XE20. I love the quick access buttons on the left of the Korg XE20 Digital Ensemble Piano. With just a touch of a single button, I can immediately recall the German and Italian pianos as well as switch to keyboard sets and style sets easily. The keyboard and style sets are the biggest advantage of Korg arrangers. Although the sounds are from the EK50, the Italian programmers have reworked the effects on the style and keyboard sets so that they sound really, really good with the inbuilt speakers right out of the box. In fact, all the demos I played in this video are just using the standard keyboard and style sets. I didn't have to change anything at all. The styles in the Korg XE20 are better than those on the Casio Arranger pianos. While Yamaha still holds the top position in terms of style programming, the styles on the XE20 are almost comparable to those found on the Yamaha PSR keyboards. In addition, each style on the XE20 comes with four variations, two rhythm fills, two intros and two endings. This number is double dead found on the competition. If you are interested in learning to play songs with chords and accompaniment rhythm, do check out my online course in the description below. While the XE20 comes with a 12-track recorder, there are some quirks and limitations. 
you can only record when an accompaniment is running and even then only in real time. While you can punch in and punch out when recording, no step sequencing is available. In fact, if you want to record just piano playing, you have to put the style's volume to zero while recording with a style playing. Are onboard sequences still relevant in these days where iPads and laptops can handle unlimited tracks of recordings? Let's discuss this in the comments below. The Korg XE20 comes with 40 user registration slots to save your custom voice and style settings while not as many as those found on the Casio PXS3000, it is more than those found on Yamaha's DGX660 piano. This digital ensemble piano will feel at home on stage in your studio as well as in your living room. There are separate stereo left and right quarter inch outputs for connecting to a PA system. You will also get to connect an external pedal in addition to the proprietary damper pedal supplied by Korg. Unfortunately, the second pedal only supports expression and sustain. I wish it can be used to trigger rhythmic fills, change registration, and trigger pitch bend or modulation, but this isn't possible. You get a class compliant USB MIDI which is great for using with the included free software as well as the free 3 months lessons that Cork provides with this piano. You can also attach a USB flash drive for playback of WAV and MP3 as well as loading styles and MIDI songs from other compatible keyboards. You also get a 3.5mm audio in port to stream music from your mobile devices. At 25 pounds, the XE20 is as portable as Casio's CDP-S350 and the PXS3000 and is way way lighter than the DJX660 from Yamaha which weighs twice as much. Due to the powerful speakers on the XE20, you can only power the XE20 with an electrical outlet and there is no option for battery power. If you do not need to be portable with your XE20, you can opt for the XE20 SP which comes with a customized furniture stand and triple pedals. Destroy the like button if you found this review informative and useful. Do check out the links in the video description for more information. My name is Jeremy C and I'll see you in one of these next videos.